Ouais. Hey Anya, how are you? Sorry, this is not Waberi, but this is just me. We had a technical difficulty. Hey Jelly, how are you? Hi Frankie. Frankie, I'll put you on just now a little bit. We just need a few more people. Everyone, sorry, we had a bit of a technical difficulty in Francophony, so we are taking over and trying to keep it moving. Right. Even, even, even the speaker. <laughs> Remy, um, it was not their fault that they could not make it. So we are not giving you the name and the nationality. Uh, yes, but you can absolutely go and check on jamesmurua.com to see what's scheduled for today. Hi, Maza. How are you doing? Hi, Bessie. Hello, Troy. Nice to see you in the living room. Well, I think we've got a few people to kick off. So, Frankie, where are you? Where's your request? Ah, there you are. Oh, hi, Frankie, how are you? Hello, gorgeous, how are you? Oh, good to see you. Oh my God, you look amazing for that room. Wow. I had to do something on together real quick. Because, Girl. Um, and thank you. I'm so glad that you could join me. Listen, right. you Mother are really, really so doing it. And I love the necklace. I love the books behind you. I love how your skin is just glowing. It's just like you've just slathered yourself in like cocoa butter or something. I love your every glow. Oh, girl. And so I, 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 I um, don't have that much time, but I do want to talk about something that you do very, very well. And I wonder if we could talk yes, about that a little bit. So okay. one of the things that I try to do in anything that I write is to have uh, beautiful descriptions that are accurate of our beautiful continent. And in mm. your books, they all have such great color. And they make us want to travel Aww. to those cities. And I'm sort of like, it's something that I love to do and I want to be able to do it better. But for all of us young writers out there, and young not in age, you know, some new to the industry at, at, I was about at, to say, at our experience, yes. <laughs> Can you tell us how to write with better, more apt, more incise description about this beautiful continent that we call home. By the way, I'm speaking to you from Accra, Ghana, where the mosquitoes are biting me, but I am A-OK -okay just being with you. Oh, fantastic. Well, sorry about the mosquitoes. It's just been raining in Nairobi, Kenya, uh, but no mosquitoes, fortunately. Anyway, um, I think really, it's generally writing with love, you know? Um, and writing with love is being able to say the continent has flaws. Being able to say, when I go to, uh, when I go to say, Ibada, I love it, but uh, I'm at UI, but there's also a problem in the fact that I'm in, the, in this university that brought so many writers to fall, but you go into the hotel and they've got the, the Bible. They don't, have, they don't have a single book by any yeah. of the writers. <laughs> <laughs> you know the bible is a best-selling book but i think it's, it's high time that we demand that our hotels and 
hospitality industries no, all around no, this no. continent actually stock some books by African writers so that when people are I traveling, know. they can discover us. How can we make that happen? How can we make that happen? Because, you no, know, I if actually, I'm not a Christian, I don't want to see a Bible. Maybe I want to see, like, you know, a London Cape Town Job's work or an Easy Motion Tourist or a Shadow King or the Eternal Audience of One by my bedside. Now, I know it's expensive, but how can we do this? Because these big hotels come to Africa and they suck us dry. What can they do for us? I think it can actually be done, but this, was, this particular criticism is an actual criticism to the University of Ibadan's uh, hotel. Guest house. The resident hotel. <laughs> the, the one where they're like, oh, welcome, you're visiting us as a writer. We're putting you up there. And I thought to myself, wow, how come they don't have all these people who've come through, right? So, I mean, Leia graduated from that place, and he's nowhere to be found. But well, you know, he's a, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a poor prince, so he's, he's, he, he doesn't stay at cheap university hotels, so he wouldn't know about this problem. <laughs> All right. Okay. Now, here's a question, though. Somebody asked a question. Um, Maza asked me a question about what I'm reading. So before I answer what I'm reading, what are you reading, Frankie? <sighs> so are you reading I, it? I am. I'm reading this book. Um, it's by. It's called Damascus because I've been very, very interested in historical fiction, and it's something that I feel it's really, really difficult to do. And the, you know, for us African writers who do historical fiction type of shit, a very high bar has been set. <laughs> you know, with um, the work of people like Jennifer Makumbi and others who do that work. And so I'm reading this book by a Greek writer who looks at what happens. Um, it's a reinterpretation of the Bible. And you know how religion is so important for us um, in our part of the world. You know, everything is God, God, God. So I'm looking at different interpretations of the Bible. And Damascus is one of them. Um, the writer's name is Christos. I feel like he's a person of color just from the way he behaves. But indeed, he's actually a Greek Australian. But I'm thinking about... You know, when we were last at Ake, there was a panel on historical fiction and there was this book that was discussed called Afonja the Rise. I won't mention the writer's name because I ran out to get his book and I brought it for him to sign. I was so excited to have it. And he signed it to the beautiful woman sitting next to me. So I won't mention his name, but I oh, was... wow. <laughs> the shade of it all. <laughs> oh, the shade of it all. Oh, you know, you it was it was horrible, you know, because I, you know, I like to think of myself as a reader first. As a, I'm a reader who actually is is fans of all of you, and I would go to the ends of the earth to get like good African books, but to be dissed you, like that so you, completely, oh man! You. And and the woman but he signed anyway, it to did not even want to read it anyway. What? <laughs> you were talking about the Bible, and I wanted to tell you this. Do you know? I was part of this project. Oh, wow. Look at that. Which is called oh. Six Books. And oh. it was like uh, contemporary writers, um, contemporary writers doing an interpretation of the Bible. Yeah. So, um, so it was a lot of fun. So, you know, for, I, you know, I have to say that I have been very, very interested um, in the role that religion plays in our everyday contemporary African life, especially in West Africa. Perhaps it's not so crazy in East Africa, but you know, in Nigeria, Ghana, the places that I'm living these days, everything is, you know, is, is, is about this religion that was imported to us and what it's doing to our culture. And in trying to understand sort of like the, the characters that I'm trying to write about, how religion plays in their everyday life, I'm trying to understand this thing because for me, faith has always been something that's uh, very, very personal. Um, so I'm looking at that and hopefully a great idea will come and hopefully some work that I could be proud of will come, but it's still in the very early stages. But the stuff that I'm reading is about Bible and the interpretation of that for our everyday lives. I know that there was some, um, some dude who has just you know, managed to scrape together some words and put a, a book out there. And he has a question about, you know, can you be great if your beard is, is weak like Abuja 5G? 
I saw that, and you know, <laughs> these younger writers out there, you, you have to tell them, that. even though I'm a young writer though, you know, you have to tell these people that when you live in core Africa, right, when there is a lockdown, mm -hmm. you don't have the luxury of calling your baba and saying, I am coming, you know? You have to stay with Look your beard and your, and your hair, like just unkempt for the culture, for the people. And I am not embarrassed to have not shaved in six weeks. So, you know, hopefully that would translate into something. But Frank, you were talking about the Bible and what you'd like to work on. And I was just yeah. thinking about a book by a mutual friend of ours that you must absolutely get. Tandung uh, Kolozanas, Hear Me Alone, which mm. is his own interpretation of the virgin birth. Oh, my except God. Except in his book, it's called Virgin Birth. Oh. And, uh, yeah. Damn. And in that book, prayer. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I mean, you have to you have to pray for me and help me because my next work will be, you know, I'm looking at something that I have very little relationship with Christianity and Islam, and I, I'm just sort of a bit nervous about it. But I find it fascinating. Oh, don't that. worry, I'll give I'll give you, I'll give you as much literature as I can on it. Okay. And then you'll have fun with it. You'll take a different direction. Oh, thank you fabulous. so much for being. Thank you. I got to go I'm now because going. someone is coming. Um, oh, yay. Yay. All right. So I will see you all later, yeah? Now I got to figure out how to give, give room to Calaf. Okay. Bye, darling. All right. Uh, yes, Maza, it is, it is absolutely something you should read. I think you'd really love it. Um... Let me see any questions. Hi, Dr. Ndovu. How are you doing? It's good to see you again, as always. Um, Kenneth, how are you doing? Yes, I recent, you recently read an article that I wrote about my experience in the DRC. It made you ex want to explore a beautiful continent. Yes, please. It is a beautiful continent. It's crazy. It's lovely. And I'm very glad that you still want to explore it, despite my little story about the Kuluna. Remy, can you please not hate on other people because you cannot grow a beard? That f weak Abuja 5G beard thing. Nah, no, my friend. Hi, Mohale. Also, very congratulations for being long listed for the, for the normal awards. We are so proud of you over here, Afro Lips 16. Kalaf, can you request me? Why can't you see my face properly? No, this way. Here it is. Can you all see me? Please give me a thumbs up if you can. Can you all see me? Kalaf, mm, yeah, we're going live with you. Thank you. I'm glad you can see me. I'm just waiting for Kalaf to join me. There he is. <laughs> hey, Kalaf. Hello. So good to see you. <laughs> Fantastic. How are you? Okay, Kalaf, Dr. Andorvo wants you to dance for her. Oh, goodness. Not today. <laughs> Not today. Yeah, but but Kalaf, you were supposed to you 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 were supposed to be in the midst of a festival. Yeah. Or is it supposed to be finished now? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, last weekend. Last weekend was you no know, it's Yeah, so what 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 when do you when do you when do you even foresee this thing happening over there in Germany? I I received an email with a with a request if I wanted to uh, yeah. to curate, and I was really uh, I was in Brazil. In fact, I was in, a, in another festival, enjoying my writing mm -hmm. rock star life, uh, and then came this in invitation, and I was thinking like, man, there's there's so many other 
great creators like yourself, for example, oh, that, could do, <laughs> that, that could do the job. But then I also um, was wondering, uh, this could also be a, uh, an opportunity to bring uh, Portuguese-speaking African writers. Uh, and also, Absolutely. I wanted uh, to also bring uh, Afro-Brazilians uh because they they they're doing great job down there so mm -hmm. i i felt like okay i should take the resp responsibility and and man up and just do the gig do it and you're a fantastic lineup yeah it, i mean you uh, you took some new yorker people like remy but other people <laughs> were like really great <laughs> You know, you, know, you, know, you know what? Let, let me tell you. Let me tell you one story. Like really, just to explain people oh. how great you are. When I went to the uh, to the Berlin uh, African Book Festival, I didn't knew anyone. Like I was there by myself. Uh, you were the mm. first person that spoke to me. I said hi. Oh, was I? Yeah, I think even you say hi first because we are like you know you have that that power that. You know, you uh, you look at someone, and someone somehow somehow feels like attracted to you, and feel this need to talk to you. You have that power, like, <laughs> and you are the first person, yeah, and you make me, yeah. and you made me feel so so valued because I was kind of like a you know Portuguese speaking writer, not, nothing published in English. I, I felt like really like left out and kind of sad, and no one. I was texting all my write a friend and say like why why we don't come to those things so like uh, I'm, i'm here being kind of like um you know uh, um, a mad a, a child with no mother or no parents i felt that and you made me feel really good awesome. and you say you, oh thank you and That you said lovely. you know you know on jackie which is again not really that many people know That's about us. everybody knows on jackie yeah he's, he's, he's famous but no many people know you have to know you, you have to know jackie to know god <laughs> <laughs> but that was fantastic that made my day yeah oh thank you very much but yeah no man so 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 you're looking at maybe like um doing the festival in 2021 yes we were we are working on it uh i'm sure af okay. after after lead i will change a few things Uh, because Afrolit gave me a lot of ideas, and I also want to have, oh, and I was I also want to see you guys dance in person. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we love so, that. So I need to find a way to bring you guys over. So definitely, uh, 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 this is one of the things that I will change in 2021. Oh, fantastic! Thank you. What you guys don't know is that the one person who's keeping a lot of us sane who are on lockdown, is this man right here called Kalaf. <laughs> he, plays, he plays music for us every Friday night, and we dance, and we just let go, and it's so beautiful. And uh, yeah, in, in spite of all the madness, it doesn't matter what, what any of our presidents say, it doesn't matter how long we're on lockdown for, when Kalaf plays music, then we're like, we have something to look forward to, we're like, Friday is coming. So now I'm like, two more days to Friday. Thank you, Kalaf. You've just like, I swear to God, everybody has been talking about that, like how much we just have so much fun with you and the music. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, again, this annoying writer, young writer from Namibia, is asking what it takes yeah. to create, what it takes to create a good festival or something like that. Uh, what do you think? Oh, yes, I saw that. He always wants to be serious, eh? I think, I, I, I think what's important in creating a good festival, I don't know, you tell me, but to me, what's important in creating a good festival is to just, like, make sure that you make the panels fun, you make, um, you have fun people there, and yeah. you, um, you like each other. I mean, we had a lot of fun in the first Afro Lit 16, you know? And suddenly we're having a lot of fun now yeah. uh, when we can't have some of the, when we have had some technical difficulties. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's really nice to just have people who love literature, people who love each other and who, who enjoy it, you know, and don't take it too seriously. 
for sure. I yeah. mean, take the craft seriously, but not take themselves too seriously. Uh, absolutely, I think that's that's the beauty. And also, um, I think Lola said that yesterday. The the generosity, like mm. when you when you're sitting with someone, especially like so, some of some of of course we 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 came to know those writers through their books, but sometimes the person is different, and um, and when you sit there, uh, I, f I feel like we feel generous enough. If you if you know how to listen the other, I think that's what makes a, a, a good panel, uh, for instance. So let's definitely good listeners, good storytellers, uh, uh, um, a must. Like we, that's what we go for. Um, I never create a literature festival. I, I, I did other works. I brought people together. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I learned in the in the, in the process is um, also try to entertain people, not only with, of course, making books available to a certain audience, but also bring uh, people that otherwise, without that festival, they will no, never come across that person or that writer or anything like that. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Of course, we, we, we like to invite all, all our friends, but sometimes we need to leave some people out and just go exactly. for the... And just see what we can do. I love you too, Maza. Remy says he is collecting so many enemies in this festival. It's fine. Their necks and head will be mounted on his wall. Remy, uh, that's a very healthy ego you have. None of us consider you an enemy. You are just a <laughs> non entity. We don't even know you. We just ignore you. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, someone asked me, uh, what's, you know? what's my favorite Portuguese uh writer or Angolan writer. Um, uh. Luandino Vieira, definitely. Uh, Agualuza, uh, I, I love him. He's, he's also a good, a good friend, so I'm, I'm privileged enough to to have one of my favorite writers, my friend, so I can uh, show them my work. And, 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 funny, and funny thing, like um, I, I, I wrote a column for a newspaper for many years in, 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 in Portugal. Um, and uh, and one day I received an email from Agualusa yeah. and saying like uh, yeah. this kind of like a really beat me in the head like uh, with pointing my mistakes. <laughs> uh -huh. And he said this is not this is not a way to end the story. Like you had a great beginning and it was basically reviewing my my, my column. And every time I after. Well, look, I don't mind being reviewed by Agualusa, right? Yeah. Like you were, wow. Yeah, and every time I was writing, I knew like, okay, Agualusa might be reading this, so I was. I was it kept me on my oh, toes, okay. like <laughs> elevate my game. So. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, I, I thank him from there. Like, and I think like our friendship stuff because we 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 knew each other like from before, like meeting in, in certain circles. Uh, but that day kind of like made me, you know, really respect him. And, uh, you know, just having such a great writer come down, you know, to the to the mortals and just share their knowledge. It, it made my day. That's right. yeah. Caroline Lawrence. Yes, unfortunately, Waberi had a technical difficulty, so he couldn't join us. So we're trying to keep it going because we knew he was supposed to be here. So with a little help from my friends, we are just talking literature. So ask anything you want. Let's share. Remy, why is Troy your blood enemy? <laughs> All right, mother, you want to know what I'm reading? Okay, I am not reading anything right now. I finished reading this morning uh, Ishmael Bear's Little Family, and it was just... Immediately after I finished reading it, I sent a message to a group that I'm part of. And it was the most beautiful, lovely book. It's um, set in Sierra Leone, but it could have been any African country. I just absolutely enjoyed it. It's, it's seen from the perspective of uh, the little family of five street children. I don't even think that we should call them street children, but five ch street children who, who stay together, who have adopted each other in a way. And uh, I think it's the first time that I have seen, um, that I've seen uh, street people humanized like that, where, you know, 
there was they had agency there was the inner monologue there was everything they went just i didn't feel sorry for them i was them and they were me you know so it was just the most uh yeah uh ishmael bey i just did the things and um and so i was so i'm really 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 excited that i'll be in conversation with him on monday which will be about 24 hours before his book goes on sale worldwide on the 28th he'll be the last guest of the festival but yeah i'm so honored that i'm going to be i'm going to be doing that because that book it just blew me away and one day when i get rich i would like to get african rights for it what are you reading kala <laughs> uh i'm i'm writing so when i'm writing i try to read less I'm reading Mazza's uh, book just kind of to as a as a getaway to you know when I need to breathe from my from my world but I I'm writing this an adaptation of a um, of a memoir from a, from a woman a prostitute in the end of the 19th century uh, she's from Cabo Verde mm -hmm. and she she became this culture icon in Lisbon and was okay. like incredible personality and this memoir was written by two men a uh, white man mm. and it's like the most racist book i ever read in my life it's really bad uh so mm. i i wanted to 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 do something or either adapt that story into a novel or even to a movie and and, and one day i was having a lunch with a, a film producer Uh, I was trying to pitch mm -hmm. another idea, another story, another script that I that I developed, and she basically refused my 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 stories. And then I was just enjoying the lunch and talking about um, characters that I've been kind of coming across that I really want to explore and and, and write and, about. Yeah, and write a, uh, into an into a novel, and uh, and she she got fascinated uh, with Fernanda. That's her name. Preta Fernanda um uh, mm -hmm. and she said can you develop this this into a series uh so i've been doing this uh, for the last two years uh, to to mm -hmm. a point that i even went to some uh script uh workshops and and everything and uh, and the last one i went was was in italy before the sh the, the lockdown um and and the the professor they say like look incredible stories because i was kind of putting the character you know into like uh, conspiracies and uh, assassination of kings and 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 all that and the person say oh fantastic fantastic character but you you need to make this character lovable because i was kind of like picking up her life when she was on the peak of her power and she said oh, tell the story before yeah. like how how she became this uh important figure how she got herself a, a brothel how she was pimping other prostitutes and and things like that um so uh -huh. in the last month I, i'm writing our all new season before she became what she became uh what she became yeah she became this like a uh, businesswoman like uh, you know people right people. a good question You said you went you'd gone for this lunch and you had pitched this thing and she had rejected it. Yeah. I just wanted to know before she reject uh, when she rejected you. She was the one who was paying for lunch, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> okay. No. Now I'm at ease. Now I'm I'm fine. Okay. Yeah. If she was paying for lunch and she rejected, no, that's fine. Yeah, okay. Movie We can work with like, you know, they can afford lunch. Uh... <laughs> okay. Uh, someone someone asked me an important question here BC Angola in a serious yeah. political upheaval I don't know how to pronounce these words in the Savimbi years did it interrupt the literary growth in the country uh definitely uh well the war like any war stops everything like uh, every effort of the country uh all the money went to the to the to the war so we we definitely suffer from investment on edu education investment on for instance like one of the things the angola suffered the most is the 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 popularization of our languages 
for instance, I'm the, I'm, I belong to the, to the generation that was born after the independence. And all the urban areas, like all my generation, we don't speak our languages. And all, we speak really poorly. Uh, to a point mm -hmm. only now, for example, uh, my nephews are having uh, Angolan languages on their schools. Only now. I, I, I lived all my life without having a professor that could come, even though, of course, par we could learn from parents. But uh, politically, I think that affected us, like especially like f the ones in the, in the um, in, let's say, in the government side. Uh, because, for instance, like everyone from the uh, Savimbi side are very versatile on the Angolan languages, especially Umbundu, which is my my tribe. Uh, so definitely, like a lack of investment in education definitely was one of the consequences of the war. And we really suffer, suffer, suffered from, from that. For it. OK. All right. Um, right. I just need to do this. Uh, Maza has asked, is the Bible slash religion too sacred to fictionalize? No, not at all. I don't think so. In fact, I need to do this because it's, I, I like it too much and I, I just need to share this. It was like 66 books, 21st century writers speak to the King James Bible. And this is from Jeanette Winterson. It's called The God Blog. And it's too funny, so I have to share. God here. People ask me how I came to be a global brand. I'd like to share some of my stories with you. The laughter, tears, and sacrifice. In the beginning, there was no social network sites, not even a Wi-Fi cafe, only dust and space time. I saw an opportunity. To create a worldwide brand, you need a world. Planet Earth, my big idea, my big idea start with a band. God, that's me, said, let there be light. And there was light. See, I was incandescent with joy. When I started out, I had only two clients, Adam and Eve. Now, Earth.com has billions of users, but I've had my ups and downs. Hell down there, heaven up here, Earth in the middle. Who knew that my simple three-tire system would be rebranded as a class struggle? Follow me on Twitter for a chapter-by-chapter -chapter account of Earth.com, the early years. Sorry, I just had to do that. It's too funny. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to look for more questions. On, ja on Jackie is, is down here. What, Jackie, say, say something. Yes, I think on Jackie. Um, on Jackie. Thank you, Frank. You blow my mind as well. Kalaf's voice is about to turn this comment into a mess. Uh, we don't agree with you. Oh, Kalaf is from Angola. Okay. Uh, Dr. Nlovo says you can dance at the end of the festival. Uh, we, we, we definitely we gotta do do uh, uh, a party in the end, or maybe another, on another session of of Afrolit. Hello, absolutely, Jackie. we can absolutely do that. Um, yeah, and definitely do a party. And since um, Ishmael will be coming out with a book, we can uh, we can consider it a way of celebrating his new book. Yeah. Hi, Molara. Hi. Remy wants to know why you were lonely, Kalaf. Remy wants to know what? Why? He wants to know why you were why you were lonely. He wants to know where on Jackie was. Sorry, it dropped somehow. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't got it. No, he wanted to know where on Jackie was. Why were you lonely during the Berlin uh, at at? at Africa Book Festival, the first one, when, when we met. Oh, why, uh, why I was alone? I don't know. Like, you know, Angolans, uh, you know, they don't like to travel into Berlin that much, though. <laughs> maybe, maybe because our experience <laughs> with communism. You know, they think, like, the world's still there, maybe. No, but Onjak is very well-traveled, <laughs> dude. Uh, I don't know why. I know. He never stays in one place at any one time. Yeah. But I never, I never Maza, I think African Sorry. Maza, don't we think don't you think we need to actually reply to the like Ethiopian Bible as opposed to the King James Bible? African writers, that is. Because 
Maza just suggested African writers need to need to respond to the to the King James Bible. What do you think, Alaf? The Ethiopian Bible or the King James? Ethiopia. Ethiopia, yeah, right? For sure. But Maza, you're gonna have first to first to translate all the Amharic for us. <laughs> <laughs> So I don't know how long that's going to take me. On Jackie, I Muna, yeah, I know, right? Start with a bag. On Jackie says in is in Luanda for weeks. Yes. Oh yeah, my Muna, you gonna host the Zoom party? For sure, Zoom party. It's done. Let's go. Yes, <laughs> Zoom book party. On Monday night, after Monday the last night? Afro Lit. Oh, Monday night. Okay. Yeah, come okay. on. Like, are we? Is anybody going to work? Is anybody? Are we not on lockdown? Yes, we are. Yes, yes we are. <laughs> Monday night. I'm bringing. I'm bringing my dressing <laughs> shoes. Okay, Maza, Maza, you make a point. The King James has larger influence and needs to be checked. That's right. Mm, right. Tash actually thinks that it should be Ethiopia. Leye, you are wanted by the crowds. Um, thank you so much, very much, Kalaf, my brother. Thank it you. has been thank lovely you. as always. Right. Fantastic. Who is joining me next? Leye, Bye -bye. are you there? Uh, bro. All right. The name of the book is 66 Books, 21st Century Writers. Speak to the King James Bible. And you've got Kwame Kweyama, Neil Barrett, Caroline Bird, Yamisi Blayek, um, Swahalia El-Bushra, Stuart Branson. Da -da -da -da. There's actually a whole lot of people. Um, there's even a Zuki Swavana there, a Wole Shoyinka, Camila Shamsi, Tim Rice. Yeah, and, and, and Zugiswa and others, essentially, and friends. Right. Who is joining? Onjaki, is it you? Okay, Onjaki, I have to save you until Friday, and until Monday, though. Ah, right. My Mona, are you dressed enough? Are you dressed? Ah, there's BC. Leia can't be found. I'm asking him. No, it, it, he just needs to comment and then I'll, I will, what you call it, I will bring him in. Ah, there you are. There you are. Um, we're waiting for Leia. He should be joining us. His Royal Highness. Well, no, Literandra, I don't, I don't think that Leia is coming. I think he's just joining me. <laughs> it would be very worrisome if we're having an Instagram live and Leia comes. <laughs> <laughs> Leia, where's your hat? Yeah, no hat today. Okay, so were you coming? Or Sorry? were you just joining me? Can you were you me? coming or were you joining me? I'm coming from where? Hmm? What do you mean coming? I wasn't coming. I don't know. This is what... Oh, okay. I just needed to make sure. This guy kept saying Leia is coming. No. <laughs> How are you? I'm good. You might not know it by looking at me, but I'm smelling really good. Yeah, hey. Look, Remy even gave you a compliment. He says your beard game is on point. Yeah, telling me need some years. 
Listen, um, mm. I want to show you what it means to be a good panelist, an experienced panelist, right? So, before anybody yeah. asks me, mm. <laughs> these are the books I am not reading because I'm reading them next. I'm going to be reading that next. <laughs> And then okay. Paka Bilal. Paka Bilal, Paka Bilal is another uh -huh. amazing African writer. And um, uh -huh. I keep meeting him everywhere in the world. He's amazing. And I feel bad I haven't had time to read this, but Mohale is up next after Paka Bilal because oh. I've not read that for a while. Then uh, No, but after that, short, after that short story that you read this morning, was it uh, this morning or yesterday? Yeah. You that actually have... absolutely... Yeah, but you see, I'm a, I'm, I'm a new generation of Africans that we say no to corruption. So after that short story I read, I should normally have just pushed the book up, but no to corruption. It's going to just be the next one after the one I planned. Then I'm reading okay. that. And then this one. All right. Helen Nabila. Oh, Travelers. Travelers. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm excited cool. to read this because um, I'm currently contracting with um, a company and they get a lot mm. of books to review. And every once in a while, they mm. sell books cheap to people who work with them. And I walked in to see what books they have. And there was Mr. Habila's book. You know, Habila. and I was, I was oh, telling wow. everybody, I know the author. I know the author, you know. It was cool. So listen... You guys have been mm. talking about writing and stuff. And I must say, you know, we're, we're in the midst of a global pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. And I think we yeah. should talk about that, especially about safety, which is why... Okay, gonna, are you washing your hands? I'm going to demonstrate. Hold on. I just want to <laughs> demonstrate. Hold on. I know what's gonna happen here. <laughs> How to be safe. <laughs> so, mm. um, you don't need to use layers briefs for this. You can use your own boxers, not layers uh. boxers. But you need a pair of boxers, right? <laughs> or granny pants. Why are you laughing? Okay. This is serious. Life's at risk, man. <laughs> I know it's serious. And this so, is okay, you do, do. do your thing, man. You see that part of the, I mean, so that's a boxer. And that part of the boxer, I don't know what the name is, but I'll call it the largest <laughs> hole. So. <laughs> ah, he's, he's, he's showing you safety. So now you're protected, Troy. right? But you're not protected enough. Uh, because this, yeah. this fucking because virus can get head. into you. This virus can control your yeah. eyes, right? So you need that. <laughs> okay. But that's not enough. <laughs> you need to have throat sanitizer. Remy. Throat sanitizer. A bottle of Remy. Exactly. Ah, but you forgot to cover your hair, though, Le. No, my afro is uh, my afro is awesome, man. My afro rejects viruses and it just fights them off. They're looking for a okay. vaccine. They well, just need people to rub my head, and they'll be fine. Oh, fantastic! That's great. Yeah. So, tell me, how you doing? I'm great. Hi, Ni. It's good to see you. Look, me just joined us. The, me, Pax. the frowning man. Me, yes. Oh, Mr. Pax, that, that man is actually a runaway cast member of Wakanda. Have you seen the way he dresses? Isn't he just? He's on point all the time. I know, but have you seen when me does the frown? I have. That frown is legendary. The, you know, Wesley Snipes wishes he had a frown like that dude guys if you are 
not here on Saturday at 12 GMT because me will be there doing the frown. Me is going to give you the frown. Better have 5G. He'll give us the frown. If you've got 3G yeah, that's connection, true. ain't going to cut it. His frown is so disarming. Yes, frowny man is here, Remy. He's in the house. I can see him in the comments, actually. His frown can confuse your uh -huh. ovaries. Well, some of us don't have ovaries, I know. but it confuses something else. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Maza, it's not a skull. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me let's let's you talk see, some let's talk Jackie some literature what's the best for the five okay let's talk some but, literature but on Jackie wants to know what the best is ah, what does one of them Jackie want to okay, know okay let's talk literature he wants to know what the best sort sanitizer is I, I will go with I think anything. this is the question well if you want to make sure that your throat is um, protected I'll keep it I'll take a lot of fluid like every 15 minutes and all you need to do is have a measuring cup and then you just want to take just enough so that you can coat the inside walls of your throat so thereabouts you know and then you just want to sip on it and watch netflix and netflix and chill with yourself okay yeah that's the trick and anything um anything with anything over 40 percent alcohol will not kill the virus, but will make you feel good when you're dying. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, my um, sanitizer consultant. Yeah, I just thought we, you know, I, it's important the that we do stuff for the people. Sorry? No, I'm just saying hello to the, uh, to the good folks in Nigeria. The buggers just came in and said hello. Oh, the buggers. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's important in these times that we um, we share tips on how to be sane and safe, you know. And mm. um, I, I've just I feel like I'm in a relationship with Amazon, you know, because I'm always getting stuff from them, and I'm about to buy a megaphone. And the mm. reason is sometimes I look out my window and people are not social distancing. So I think okay. as a good citizen, if I have a megaphone, I can, I can keep watch on the street from my window and shout at people, two uh, meters, motherfucker. Sorry, I saw your oh, show. I think that's a wonderful thing to do. Uh, Tolu Daniel, uh, Leia is not normal. Well, if you are normal, wait, 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 wait. Tolu, on, then on, maybe on, you hold shouldn't on, Hold on, hold on, hold on. Leia is not normal. Abu Bakr. Hello, Paul Hold on, let's let's deal with this. Someone said I'm not normal. I.e., I'm insane. So Tolu Daniel says you're not normal. I would have Mr. Daniel know that I am a certified cat carrying lunatic. I have been insane since it was invoked <laughs> to be insane. I am proud of my madness. How dare he make it sound like something pedantry? I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg, I beg. I beg. Next question. I know, like insulting you. Like, you know, like he doesn't want to be mad like me or something. I don't know if Tolu is man or woman, though. They, let's use those pronouns for them. They don't know, you know, how happy. You know, it's not. Oh, mm. Did you just cough? No, <laughs> I blew. I didn't cough. As you were saying. As I was saying, okay, I go the phone the wrong way. <laughs> did, you make that saying, your, did you make that yourself? <laughs> <laughs> I got it from the neighbors. Anyway. Uh, my Mona, you wanted to know. Um, there's a, there's been a lot of uh, writing inspired by COVID. Has that inspired any of us to do some writing around it? Yeah, um, yep, yep. COVID has inspired I, me. I, 
I'm Are writing, you writing a book about COVID? No, but I'm writing very quickly because if COVID gets me, then this manuscript won't be done, you know? And, you know, it's... No, I am writing, but I'm not, I'm not writing. I'm not, I'm, I'm certainly not inspired by COVID itself, but my whole thing is I need to finish, I need to finish a manuscript uh, because I, I love you guys, but I, you know, we had this conversation, you and I. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, if, if my manuscript is not finished, who is going to... Who's going to finish it? The world you know? will be deprived of this great contribution to the zeitgeist that our new that books would be. We cannot Dude, do that no. to the world. There's no contingency plan. We have to finish no. these books before everybody dies. Well, if everybody dies, then there's no point. We have to finish this book so that if everybody dies, <laughs> future humans or whatever exists, when they have their own form of uh, archaeology, they'll be able to find our works and realize that those people were not too bad. I mean, look at what they wrote. I know, right? They had a writer <laughs> called Leia Dinley and another one called Zukiswa, but you know, but they had the right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Abu Bakr, Leia is not tr struggling to write Allah, at all. You are well, whether he's struggling. I'm doing a shout out to, to my friend. Something. Allah, how you doing? He is not struggling, and I'll tell you why. He sends me like uh, his chapters every every day of the new chapters that he has written, and uh, I think right now though he's 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 going towards the end of the manuscript, so he's decided he's gonna keep everything away from me up until so that I can. So that I can pretend to be surprised by no, the ending. No, no, that's not why I've not been sending them to you. I'm slowing it down because eh. I'm afraid that once I write the last chapter, then I'll realize that mm. the entire world, the rest of the world is in a bloody pandemic. I mean, fuck this virus, you know. And I don't know what I'm going to do after that. So I'm slowing it down. And also, you're okay, quite, no, that, you're that, quite that, busy. That, that's a good reason. You're also very busy with the And then you might also end up going to run. Sorry? You might also decide that you want to go and run like your like your British neighbors. No, 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 no. I'm not and running. Then... I'm I'm jogging in my flat. I'm doing a lot of exercise indoors. I found a very good um, website that helps you do a lot of exercises at home. Um, yeah, it's called P O R N Hub or something. I don't know, but yeah, it helps you do a lot of exercises. Oh, in man. I understand our time is almost up, so I'm going to have to ask you to exit. I love you and love you uh, catch you in the virtual room. room. Love you guys. Bye. All right. Okay. So, everyone, I am going to be departing now. Yes, Leia has been watching Pornhub. Uh... That's where he gets his exercise from, Frankie. But he keeps inspiring all of us. Thank you, Tash. Thank you, Abu Bakr. Ndegwa, it's good to see you again. Bessy, love you. Tomorrow's session, we have Suleiman Adonia at 12 GMT. And we've got Jennifer Makumbi at this time. Please don't miss it. It's going to be fantastic. And I am pretty certain that there won't be any technical difficulties. I hope so. Cross your hands with me. See you tomorrow, guys. Looking forward. Catch up right here. Yeah, Latandra, tomorrow will be epic. Thank you so much, guys. Yes, and for those who don't know GMT, uh, Google it. 12 GMT is one in West Africa, two in Central Africa, and three in East Africa. Thank you. And thank you, Tolo Daniel. It's good to see you. Okay, but people don't want to leave. Thanks, Malara. Okay, I know, I know you really like looking at my face, but you can exit now, guys.
<laughs> I will set an alarm. Please do, Miss Belinda. Set an alarm. And Fred, you are checking in as we are departing. GMT things. Fred, we are leaving now. It's the end of the broadcast. Yeah, Fred has come to switch off the lights. Guys, I need to save the video. And? And then?